Hello, everybody. Um, happy Wednesday, maybe. Um, I know it's the middle of the week for a lot of you out there, but uh, thought I'd have a, thought we'd have a little bit of fun today. Um, I currently have in my possession a boneyard brick that I had picked up from my uh, local game store. I'm sure if you've um, been watching and looking out there in the space, there's a lot of um, social media folks that <clears throat> have probably done a full reveal on the boneyard brick and all the fun stuff that comes with it. Um, I, however, um, go to my local game store in order to procure what I need, which I think is what a lot of us on occasion have to do. Um, it's the only way that we can, you know, acquire our minis. Um, a lot of other shows may have sponsorships or maybe creative enough to actually, um, you know, uh, 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 print out their own minis. Um, I'm not wearing any of my um, accoutrement because I'll be showing um, on the mini cam, which is currently I was testing and sizing up with the infamous Fertile Dragon, one of my favorites. I know for a lot of people out there, a lot of you out there tend to strip these and repaint them. I don't have that skill. I wish I had that skill. I do not have that skill. So, um, that, let me show you um, what we're going to be messing with today. So here is the brick, the boneyard brick, as they say. I think this came out a few weeks ago. Um, its availability was a little bit dicey, but I always try to support the local stores because I know the local stores will, um, you know, benefit me more in the long run, right? Places to go, people to see, and head out to the local store and buy your local gaming supplies. Uh, for a lot of you, you may not have a local store. You rely on Amazon and some of the other big box solutions. Um, but I always try to focus on local stores. I'm located in Southern California. <clears throat> There's a couple stores that I go to. There's the um, Dice House in Fullerton, California that I go to a lot for my terrain. And then there's SoCal Gaming in Temecula, where I go for a lot of my gaming supplies as well. So if you are in Southern Cal and those places sound familiar to you, hopefully you get a chance to go out and visit them. So let's take away the Turtle Dragon and let's pop open a box and see what we got. Always feels like Christmas a little bit when I do this. So, first one, and I'm a I'm a fan of the uh, artwork. Always have been. Um, what's interesting is the you know, Tyrannosaurus zombie, another version of it, right? Um, if I get a chance, I will pull down the other version of it that I have. Um, it's you know, undead dinosaurs have become kind of popular and fun within the module and the content. I'm a fan. I use them all the time. Um, and this time I remembered my scissors to make sure that I can safely open up the box. Although the packaging on these things is notoriously challenging, mostly the tape. And then once you get through the tape, you have to then get through all the packaging and wrapping on the inside. So I'll try to move that along as quickly as I can. Now, the cool thing about these, if you haven't done these yet, they average, I think, anywhere from $15 to $18 a blind box. Um, they discount them if you buy the whole brick that I showed you earlier. And a brick usually contains eight of these in their shrink wrapping. Um, they claim... I'm going to say the manufacturer claims that you will find a rare um, uh, or you're guaranteed a certain number of rares if you buy a brick. Um, I bought multiple bricks of all the different releases and I've always seemed to get a healthy balance of rares. But if you're into that type of collection, I guess that would make more sense to you than me. Um, I don't typically collect for like 
rarity and stuff like that, I usually um, I usually collect for purposes of running my games, and I run a lot of games, so that's usually why I, um, I you know do these. I can't paint. Um, I've got a friend of mine that we're going to do some tutorials on 3D printing to teach people how to do 3D printing, including myself. I don't know how to do, to do 3D printing. For the most part, I've always just been a storyteller and running campaigns. Um, that usually seems to be the main thing I do. Uh, if you want to learn more about us, um, rather than filling the front end of this with a whole lot of information about us, just go to the About section. Our Discord, our Patreon takes you to you know YouTube. Takes you to all the different things that we do. Um, and we run a lot of uh, Twitch campaigns as well as a lot of, you know, just Discord campaigns. So, you know, feel free. Click on a button and take a look at us. And if you haven't followed me yet, it would be really helpful if you did. Um, uh, I'm kind of rebuilding um, my channel. Um, I unfortunately suffered a setback with the previous channel I was involved with. And now I'm having to start from scratch. Um, painful but necessary so let's see what we got oh four figures right typically one large three small um, and we'll do some math at the end of the boneyard brick to give you an idea if you do have like maybe $120 saved up that you can afford to jump in with your miniature collection I'll kind of go over why I think this is kind of a good deal so what do we have we'll toss that off to the side and so this is the ubiquitous wrapping, right? The big one usually comes inside this. Uh, you then have to carefully pull it out, get rid of that plastic. Now, the challenge you're going to have is reading this, but just by already seeing it, um, it is a atagya. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, if you want to take a closer look at it right there. Um, pretty interesting. Honestly, I homebrew all my monsters, so I know most of these monsters or miniatures are associated with pre-generated, but just the physical look of this one, I've already got a great idea of what I want to turn it into. And our next one, uh, I'm going to guess, is a dwarf skelly. Um, I'll put him down there so you kind of get a somewhat better look at him. Um, do not have the best camera in the world, but I try. Like a dwarf skeleton. I've done one. Huh. I've done one of those before. That's kind of interesting. Uh, bubble wrap. If you do a lot of shipping, reuse it. You know, waste not, what not, as they say. Uh, let's see who is the next one. Um, it definitely looks like a ghoul. Um, interesting looking ghoul. Give you a close up of it really quick. You can see him right there. Camera's a little fuzzy, but the ghoul is definitely kind of your atypical ghoul, as they would say. Um, interesting. Let me see if I can get you a little bit of a closer look there um yeah I see his back and um I'm gonna guess that's a dwarf skelly based on size um as you can see the artistry is you know the painting and everything is kind of uh super basic and super simple so I totally get that um and then we will go with the fourth one looks like it is a vampire spawn now these i do need um i've got obvious well and obviously with the vampire spawn you've got some um as you can see the vampire spawn super handy to have if you're running Ravenloft or some other kind of undead um, adventure. You know, uh, they're always good to have, especially when you're running your encounters with them. So these are the four that we got. Now, 
basic math, right? If these are averaging 15 to 18, I think it depends on who your retailer is or on Amazon uh, per box. What's interesting about this math, you get four minis, basically at about $4.95 on average per mini. Considering usually there's a large mini involved, I mean, if you've got a spare $20 lying around, this is not a bad investment if you're just starting your collection and you're not, um, uh, a, you're not a painter or you're not interested in painting, which I personally am not because I'm not very good at it. So I don't usually like to do it. So I prefer to go this route um, for my items. Um, so that was in the first one. Let's go ahead and open up the next one. I've always got my fingers crossed that I'll get a you know halfway decent large one because those ones are fun. And like I said, I tend to always homebrew my own monsters, so I rarely ever use them for what they're you know kind of typically designed for. Um, and I just oh I could is it? nope not a big one. But we shall see. So we open up. Inch ooh now that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. I got two larges, um, two smalls. That's weird. I've never seen that before. So the first large um, looks like a snake thing. And see, here's the thing that, that frustrates me. It's almost impossible to read the writing on these clears. They made them big, like the writing big. But I'm an old fart, man. I... You know, I'm trying to read the bottom of this and it's practically impossible with the way it's done. So, you know, make it so we could read it. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, it looks like it is jelly-related creature of some sort. If you know what it is, post it in chat. But I can barely read the base, so I don't have a clue. Um, and because, like I said, I homebrew all my monsters, I'm not super familiar with all the monsters um but yeah it looks like a yeah it looks like an octodich jelly is what it appears to be very interesting looking figure but here's the weird thing i got another large with that large i've never seen that before that could actually be a misfill um maybe not as I have been given a, oh, wow, if this is what I think it is, yeah, the mind witness. Um, these things are cool based on their own stats, but honestly, just looking at it, I'm already going to brew something up for this that's going to be super cool. Um, so, yeah, two larges in one box. That's pretty, that is pretty crazy um i don't think that has happened before you can see that guy there um and then it looks like um a haunted table or haunted items um kind of cool kind of clever and then i believe yep a wraith um as well see him here kind of typical and I mean, this is the boneyard brick, so all these things are going to be undead based and all that fun stuff. Um, so this group here. But once again, you know, if you do the math, now I got lucky, I got two larges, but you know, on average, a little over four bucks, you know, just under five bucks per mini. That's not really bad for a fully painted and vetted out mini. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and do another one. So far, no repeaters after two boxes, so that's a pretty good sign. Sometimes that's happened to me before where I've opened up two blind boxes and immediately got um, repeaters. So with that, let's go ahead and pull out another one. And I am currently writing a couple new campaigns right now for my Discord and for, so, for, um, for a new Sunday night um, game and a um, continuation of my Friday night game. 
Um, my two Wednesday and one of my other Sunday campaigns are getting ready to wrap up, so I will have more time on my hands. Uh, so I currently run a campaign Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, one shots on Thursday, and we do have a one shot this Thursday. So if you're interested in running in the one shot, jump into our Discord, join up, and check the uh, events channel for upcoming events that'll have the ability for you to hit accept and then join in that one shot. Um, and then I have a Friday night game and we will be doing a zero session, I think, a zero session this Sunday uh, or possibly next Sunday. Um, I've communicated with four of the players and we've been in regular communication. There's a fifth player that hasn't um, chimed in yet. So as soon as that fifth player chimes in, we'll, you know, Hopefully get started on that zero session. All right, let's see what we got here. Oops, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so far the biggies haven't been all as big as I thought. You'll see here, though, um, uh, the classic carrion crawler, right? This has been around for a very long time from a classic perspective. Um, the carrion crawler is one that I remember playing in uh, first edition, um, even pre first edition. I think it's been around a lot because, you know, when you go into a dungeon, everything's dead. Or if you're looting a corpse, you know, a corpse has been down there for a while. The first thing that's chewing on it is a carrion crawler. Um, let's see what else do we have here. And I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't prepare, I didn't go into the list and pull them up so I know exactly what they are. I am actively attempting to read the bottoms just so I can, you know, just show you how I would normally do it. But the writing is bad, so I do apologize for that. This does look like a tiefling of sorts. Um, kind of cool. See it in there. I'm down in the mini cam for you. See them a little bit better. Ooh, another little, little, little one. Another skelly, perhaps maybe a gnome or a halfling. Um, but I think it just says skeleton. Kind of hard to tell. Once again, these bases are super hard to read. Um, so if you jump over to the, um, I believe it is on the Wizards of the Coast, or no, maybe Nolzers. Where I? Oh no, Icons of the Realms. You go to Icons of the Realms, um, and if you head on over there, by the way, this one here, I thought it was a Wraith or a Reaper. This is actually the Avatar of Death. So this is actually on the box. So that is the Avatar of Death. So I was wrong about that one. Um, nope, this one is just a Skelly. Um, by its size and the way it is, I'm assuming I could pretend it's a gnome, halfling, or dwarf skelly. It's kind of stunted and small in size. So as you can see, another skelly. And then the fourth one out of that box. Oh, now this is cool. It might be something invisible. Now this guy is pretty cool. It looks like something meant to be invisible. I think it's some kind of, might be a stalker. Not really sure. You know what I'm gonna do really quick so that I can do these for you correctly? I'm going to quickly bring up my ability to um, look these up. And I'm just going to give me a moment here to pull up the list. Um, let's go to Google. List of Boneyard. Of course, it's one word. Go to the D&D Boneyard Minis Gallery. Get a feel for this. All right. So 
Nope, I was right. It is the gnome skeleton. So that one is the gnome skeleton right there. Um, I do apologize that the camera is not perfect. I do plan on getting a better camera in the near future. But as you can see, that is the gnome skelly. Um, let's see who this guy is. Uh, Phantom Warrior is what this one is, folks. That is the Phantom Warrior right there. Pretty cool. Now, you see the sword? You see how that sword is bent? Um, with these minis, that's kind of a common problem I run into. A lot of the thin plastic sections seem to go, um, uh, obviously, through packing and shipping and stuff. Um, the thinner plastic pieces tend to be a bit of a challenge. Um, and I want to make sure I got this one right for you. It's the ochre jelly was this one. O-C-H-R-E, ochre jelly, um, which I'm immediately going to throw out that name and custom build something because that's a silly name. Don't like it. Um, let me find... This one, oh no, this is interesting. Oh, there he is. Um, so the, yeah, that was a mind witness and that's interesting. It came as a secondary large in the box. Um, and what's cool about that, it's considered rare. So evidently that's a good thing. Um, so let's, you know what, let's keep going. Um, let me just double check this tiefling one. I think it is a, um, no, it's not that one. Let's see, they got some cool minis in this set. I didn't realize that uh, they had such a variety. Um, see. Uh, tiefling vampire spellcaster. That's cool. That's what this one is, folks. That is the Tiefling Vampire Spellcaster. That's pretty cool. I like that one. All right. Let's open up another box and see what we get. Um, I fixed my camera so the close-ups seem to be working a little bit better. Sorry about that. Um, if you are spending your Wednesday late afternoon with me, thank you. Um, I'm currently in the process of rebuilding my channel. Um, my main focus is teaching people how to play D and D. Um, I've been playing for almost over forty. Well, actually, over forty years now, since I was nine years old, and I've played a whole slew of other games, which I play from time to time. I do enjoy Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy, um, a lot of other RPGs, both old and new. I'm a fan of all of them, um, and even though I'm more D and D centric. The um, Discord itself, or the RPG Academy Discord itself, is meant for all comers, all players, especially those that need help learning how to run a game online. Um, if you join our Patreon and join our Discord, I will help you set up your own channel, and I will help you um, run your own online game, as, as well as others that will help you do it, too. Because for a lot of people... For the longest time, that's been the only option for you. Just don't have enough people nearby, not enough people around, don't have a local game store, um, and you know it's hard to get a game together. So you know we help you do all the things. If you don't want to run your own Discord, come on over to ours. We can set your game up there. Um, it is a developer Discord. Uh, we have Avray, we have Groovy Bots, we have other bots to help you as well. So feel free, jump over and ask any of the moderators uh, any questions that you want. And the reason I went with the RPG Academy is because I really enjoy teaching people how to play this game. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I've met a lot of longtime friends, new friends. In fact, my favorite way to play is with a group of strangers at the table. Um, I find that to be the best way to play for me because then I learn and these new these new folks become friends or not but no matter what meeting new people is always lots of fun so 
Guess what, folks? Guess what? I just looked into this one, and it's got something pretty cool in it. It looks like we got zombie T-Rex. This one is definitely juicier than the other one I have. Um, I got something else with it. I'll have to take a look at what that piece is. I'm not sure what that is, but yes, we did it. On the fourth pull out of a brick of eight, we got the zombie T-Rex. Cool is that? Give you a little close-up look of it. He is pretty cool. This is one of the ones I was hoping to get to kind of continue my collection. I'll probably take some pictures of them and post them later on Twitter and all those fun places. Um, send out my pics. So yeah, he's pretty juicy. Um, the other one I have um, is not as juicy as this one. So pretty cool detail on the eyes, though. I'm pretty surprised by that. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, so far, no repeaters yet. I'm I'm on my fourth box, and no repeaters yet. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, it looks like I have gotten... Let's see what he is, since I can't read the bases. I'm going to guess he's another ghoul, potentially. No, he is a Goliath zombie, folks. Goliath zombie. So, yeah, pretty cool. And it would seem, even though they're skellies, you could still pass their... Their skellies are juicy enough. I think they could pass off as zombies, too. I mean, if you really look at this skelly, this is listed as a skelly. But it's fairly juicy. You could pass it off as a zombie as well. Um, but a Goliath zombie is pretty cool. I like that. Let's see what else we got here. Um, this one I did see. This one I saw. Where are you? Yeah, I don't think that's right. Let me make sure I got you. Well, maybe that is right. Is that the Mummy Lord? It looks like it might be the Mummy Lord, but let me double check because that mini doesn't quite look right. Um, no, Spectre. That is a Spectre. The picture's a little wonky, but here's what the Spectre kind of looks like. A little purplish and black in appearance. So, pretty cool. Let's see. Ooh, a very little one on the last one. Super tiny. Um, oh, you know what? I think it's the hand. Hold on a sec. You guys will get a kick out of this. This is pretty crazy stuff. Um, crawling hand. Yep. Um, that is ridiculously small. It's the crawling hand. Um, so, undead mage hand. That'd be kind of cool if you're a necromancer casting Mage Hand. That'd be lots of fun to do that with it. Um, yeah, crazy. Kind of small. And then the T-Rex the came with its own separate piece. I think I can add on to it, maybe. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Um, it's kind of a seriously taped bag, so I'm having a hard time opening it. Give me one minute. Um, what is this? Interesting. I wonder if this is something you're supposed to place in his mouth. Or is it the... Um, let me take a look at him online and let's see what they've done with him. Because it, it looks like it's an amalgamated grouping of like skellies and bodies. So maybe you attach it into his mouth. And it's supposed to look like there's undead coming out of him. Um, there are a couple places on them. I think you could do that, but let me see how they have them set up online. Um, don't see it. I'll have to research that later. Yeah. 
it's interesting. Um, not sure what that's for. I will have to figure that out later. So let's go ahead and move on to our fifth box. Now, granted, I'm moving on to the fifth box. I've had no repeaters yet. Um, this is after buying a brick from my local store. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, normally, by now, I've had at least one or two repeaters um, when I buy a brick. So the fact that I did not get a repeater in this brick um, hopefully will bode well. Grab my scissors. The wrapping is being challenged. All right. So we got four more boxes left. Go ahead and open up our fifth box and see what we've got. Oh, this is a really good size one, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful opening it. Um, this, I believe is a yep that's what i thought it was but let me double check it i'm really hoping i get the bone whelk that's that thing looks really cool um yep this is an elder black pudding so a large size black pudding um i can homebrew the heck out of this thing it's obviously quite a simple mini but one of your larger minis it is considered huge. They are classifying it as a huge um, item or monster. But yeah, that would be the Elder Black Pudding. That's pretty interesting. Fix the focus there for you. Um, come out just a bit on these bigger ones. So yeah, that's to give you some spectator view. The Goliath zombie right next to it. Give you some idea about differences in size. That's pretty crazy, right? Um, hey, but still cool. Let's look at what else we got in here. First repeater. Um, our first repeater is the spellcasting um, vampire. Tiefling vampire spellcaster. Which I'm okay with this being a repeater because this could be typically a character that somebody wants to play. So that is our first repeater out of the fifth box. And, whoa, this guy's funky looking. Let's see what he is. It would appear he is a drowned assassin. Now... My Sunday campaign that I'm writing for is going to be pirate-themed. It's actually going to be based on the founding of the Revelry and Darktoe in the Menagerie Coast ser series. Um, and this is a drowned assassin. Let me fix that a little bit for you. Right there. Interesting. I wouldn't mind getting a couple more repeaters of these. But once again, you know, a lot of these... Undead ghouls, zombies, ghasts, they can be ubiquitous. You can use them as equally the same. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, got an archery style here of some sort. Let's see what it is. I think it's an undead skeleton as an archer is what it looks like. Um, let's double check. Yep, human skeleton, archer. Just one of the classics. Um... And I'm okay with that. My skeleton collection grows pretty much every time they release a brick. There's almost always at least one or two of these in there for the most part. So, yeah, human skeleton, archer, pretty cool. All right, let's open up box number six. And here we are opening up, um, wait a minute, no box. Yeah, box number six, we're going to open up. And here we are opening up box number six. I've only had one repeater. That's probably a record for me, um, which, you know, I probably should keep my mouth shut because, you know, now it's going to break the record, as they say, because definitely not going to be good. Something horrific is going to repeat itself 20 times. Ooh, cool. Got another cool big one, folks. This is one of the better bricks I've ever gotten. This has been pretty cool. 
So I believe this is one of the ones I was hoping to get. It appears to be uh, the Skittering Horror. I really did want this one because for a lot of my customer home brewing, this is a perfect model that I really like. I would, and it, on here it says it's uncommon huge. So my guess is that I could easily find more of these if I bought more of these blind boxes. But I mean, just on the standard camera, I mean, you can see them pretty well, right? That's pretty darn cool. I'm gonna put them on the mini cam for you so you can see them down there as well. Get them focused for you. Yeah, that's... That is pretty cool. I mean, the front of that face. I mean, you could homebrew the heck out of that thing. That could be a million. You could make that into a million different things, and it would be super cool. So, yeah, so far pretty good with this brick. Pretty happy. Um, oh, yeah. I think these are Will-O-Wisps, will but let me double check. These have gone through, yep, yeah, Will-O-Wisps. These have actually gone through many incantations. Um, you'll notice this one. Let me get it focused in here for you. Um, this one looks a little bit more like what you traditionally think a Will-O-Wisp would be. These have been in many of the different collections and have gone through like a lot of different variations of iteration of what they look like. Um, I think I like this one the best so far. I think I like this one a lot. Oops, sorry about the focusing folks. Trying to get it to focus and it doesn't, there it goes. So yeah, pretty cool. These are deadly. Even the traditional uh, traditional stats for these are pretty ripe. Um, I think Friday I'm gonna do a chill session and show you how I build my custom monsters because I have a lot of writing I need to do to get ready for my games and I'm more than happy to share that with all of you out there. Once again, no repeaters so far other than that um, Tiefling Vampire Caster. Now this one, I believe I saw, this is a ghost, another ghost. I have quite a few ghosts through other collections. Obviously you don't have to be a master at painting these because, well, they're ghosts. They could be anything you want them to be, I guess, right? Um, but yeah, there's your ghost. Let's see what else. The fourth item in here. Um, okay, I think I saw this one. This one is pretty gross and funky looking. I'm not really sure. Nope, oh, yep. It is a spawn of Kais um, or Kiss. Um, it is definitely an interesting looking that focus. Definitely an interesting looking mini. I could probably homebrew this into something a little bit more interesting as well. But once again, that thin plastic folks, right? I mean, the thin leg plastic, that's dicey. These things always seem to break. I'm glad it didn't break in shipping. All right, that finishes box number six. We have two left, so let's go on to box number Seven and eight. And let's see what box seven has for us. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to go eat some lunch. Um, because I have a game tonight at um, seven o'clock. By the way, if you join our Discord, any of the campaigns that are up and running, um, you're free to listen in on. Um, that way, if you want to learn and uh, kind of get a feel for how other people are running their games and learn those yourself. Um, like I said, we teach and we learn. That's our main focus. Still no big repeaters. This is pretty cool. This, I believe, check. This is a juvenile kraken. Now that's pretty cool. Man, that is cool. I'm getting a lot of unique minis. I will have pictures of these up later 
um, on my Twitter. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, uh, please do RPG. I think it's underscore RPG or it's RPG underscore Academy underscore. Um, I love to take pictures of minis. I can't paint them, but once they're painted, I love taking pictures of them and showing them off because they're a lot of fun. Even on the regular camera here, the non-mini cam, that shows up pretty good. The coloration of the eyes is pretty cool. Digging that. And then down here, you can see him a little bit better on the mini cam. I'll have to make a little room here in a minute. But yeah, there he is on the mini cam. He's pretty cool looking. I like this one. Hmm. So if you want to challenge your pirates... Right? To have a juvenile kraken to challenge him with. Um, that's, I'm pretty impressed with this brick so far. It's been pretty cool. Uh, let's check what else came with it. Our second repeater is that kiss creature. So we've seen him already. These are smaller minis. Another one. So I now have two of those. So they'll be fun to homebrew because I can. You know, have more than one mini. So if the encounter is expanded to more than one uh, of those, I can do that. Um, did I get one of these already? No, I think this might be the Death Lord. Hold on one sec. Um, nope, not the Death Knight. I would love to get a Death Knight, but um, let's see. I'm not seeing this one. Where is he? There he is. That is a Dread Warrior. So we've got a Red Warrior here for you. Once again, you could easily use this as a ghost, a ghast, a specter. Um, that's one of the nice things about quite a few of these minis is that they're very interchangeable to use within your campaign if you choose to do so. And the last one out of that box might be another ghoul or skelly. Let's see. Oh, I think it's a mummy. Let me double check the list. Let's make sure because my eyes are awful and I'm old and I'm blind. Yep, it's a mummy. That's pretty cool. I do I only have one of these and here's the mummy that they that's in the brick. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I like this one. That one's kind of cool. Um all right, so we're going to open up our last box. And do some math and kind of talk about the affordability of miniatures. Um, I'm a fan of 3D printing. I like to watch it. I don't know how to do it yet. But a friend of mine that's in our Discord, like I said earlier, is going to be helping me learn. And we'll be sharing with you uh, through our Twitch channel how to learn as well. Um, let's see what do we got here. No big repeaters um, out of the whole brick. I've so far only gotten two repeaters, and that's it. That's pretty amazing. <gasps> oh, my God. OMG. Now, this is how weird this is. Look, you see this horse. So there's the horse inside of the base. But look at the size of this thing that they sent me. Go figure. It's a whelk. I ended up getting the Welk in there. Their packaging is kind of wonky. It's weird. I really wanted this one because this one's really fun. Um, I'm going to homebrew the heck out of it. When I saw it on the box, I thought it was super cool looking. But yeah, I believe that's the undead Welk. Let me double check. Uh, bone Welk. So it's got a bunch of bone here to the back of it. Um, that is pretty cool. You a, kind of a better look of it uh, down here. Yeah, he is pretty darn cool looking, you know, pretty darn cool looking. And I don't know what this horse thing is. Let's figure that out. It's uh, uh, allergy season for me. Sorry about the, the clearing of my nose, folks. Um, I'm kind of stuck doing it. The Warhorse Skeleton, kind of what I figured it was. Kind of, once again, another classic um, skelly, um, as they say. One of these days, I will give you a tour of the studio and show you all my minis. I think I'm up to a couple thousand by now. Um, 
but I started late in the collecting game. Um, but yeah, this one's pretty cool. Let me show you this one here. I was looking at her. She's really cool. You can see it perfect. Um, so yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, I'm limited on what I could do with him. I don't know. Think about that. Um, and then... So, folks, out of a brick of eight, we're about to find out... I've got two more to open here. Or two more of the bubble wrap packages that I'm opening. This one's kind of buried deep into it. Um, but I can safely say I only had, based on opening these last two bubble wraps... I've only had three repeaters. So I did get another repeater, um, the Z or the ghoul. So I did get another one of the ghouls. Cool, he's holding the hand. Really cool. See him there, right? And then this one might be a rare that I just got. Um, let me see here. I think it might be. Has the potential of being yes, uh, no. It's still considered an uncommon. It's a death lock. So my guess is an undead warlock that's classified as a death lock, as they say. So pretty cool looking. Um, you can use them as a PC mini if you wanted to. It's got some cool vibes to it. Um, so a brick of eight. Only three three repeaters, and they're repeaters that I'm more than happy to have. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight larges. Um, I think I got a couple rares in here. Um, and, of course, the classic, getting the really cool undead T-Rex right there. That's pretty fun. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Valuation-wise, yeah, yeah, it cost me $125 for the brick of eight. Um, normally, it's $140, I think, and some change uh, because of the um, uh, tax and all that stuff. Uh, but, you know, as you can see here, if you break this down and kind of look at the overall cost of paints, buying uh, unfinished minis and stuff like that, there's a definite value to all of this. Um, I like to break down um, valuation based on, you know, the per unit, right? Because you basically now have 32 minis, eight of which are large, which would typically go for anywhere from eight to fourteen dollars individually. Um, so let's let's take that as an average, right? So eight large minis, and let's call those just ten dollars even. So that's eighty bucks right there, right? The remaining twenty-four, right? Uh, a pack of one or two could run you four to six bucks, depending on you know which nulzers or which one you're you're pretty much focusing on. I do like that Kraken. He's cool looking. Um, so if you really do the math, I mean, you're getting on average anywhere from four to five bucks a mini for your for your cost. They're already painted. They're table ready. Um, they could easily be used for homebrew if you wanted to homebrew them. Um, and if you have 125 bucks saved up and you decide that's what it's going, what you want to do is to kick off the start of your collection with one of these bricks, I recommend it. Um, this one was surprisingly good to me. Um, the brick gods were looking out and they definitely rewarded me uh, for my patience on waiting to do this. So with that, um, that's pretty cool. So I will play, I will uh, post some pictures um, on Twitter. I'll put this full video on YouTube eventually. Uh, it's, it lingers on the Twitch channel for a couple weeks, I think, before it automatically falls off. Um, if you haven't followed me, please do. It'll help me out tremendously. I've got to rebuild my affiliate and a lot of my other activities. 
Um, I really enjoy sharing this game with everybody. I really enjoy sharing this within the community. Um, the TTRPG community, the RPG community, the Hope for TTRPG community, um, all those are great, supportive, creative communities that you definitely want to get involved in for sure. So um, with that, uh, your Wednesday is over on the East Coast. Your Wednesday is pretty much over in the Midwest. Um, and on the West Coast, you've got a couple hours left. Um, however, happy Wednesday, everybody. See you all next time. Bye. Figure out why. Yeah. <laughs> that media CPU usage is huge. I'll have to look into why that happens. <laughs> All right, now I gotta eat. I'm getting hangry. Take some pictures.
Hey Brad, it's Jason. I just finished up my day. Available if you'd like to call me back. 951-397-6616. Thanks. Bye.